This is an awesome Ford Fiesta. In fact, it's Ken Block's Ford Fiesta, and we're here at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, where the on and off rain is not gonna stop us from trying Ford's new 2011 production Fiesta. This car's been selling like crazy in Europe for a couple years, and today, we're gonna run it on an autocross course and on some of San Francisco's best roads to find out if it's all hype or if Ford's newest small car actually delivers in all the areas they say it does. I'm Matt Farah, and this is The Smoking Tire. 22 pounds of boost. Woo! Right off the bat, the Fiesta's got a lot going for it. First of all, this generation was the best selling car in Europe, the first quarter of 2010. Always a good sign. And the Americans have been asking for a European car for what seems like years at this point. Well, here it is. It's the European car. It's the Fiesta. And like lots of other European cars, it's small. It's really small. And this doesn't surprise any of us because America really needs a great small car. They've been chasing the Corollas and Civics and Yaris's and Versas for a few years now. And it's our time. And Ford is seems like the right people to bring it to us because they've been selling small cars successfully in Europe for a really long time. And under their one Ford philosophy, they're going to unify the markets and give us those cars. So here we go. It starts at $15,000. And as tested, we're talking seventeen grand with our keyless start. Uh, I got heated seats, I've got the screen up there, and I've got uh, some chrome trim and things like that. The word of the decade is fuel economy, and the Fiesta delivers on that word. 38 miles per gallon with the 5-speed, which we're driving right now, 40 miles per gallon with the new available 6-speed automatic. That's also an option, but I say go for the stick. The downside of that fuel economy is, as you can imagine, power. There isn't much of it. Ford's got an all-new four-cylinder, 1.6 liter, 120 horsepower, and 116 pound-feet of torque. And we're driving around with three people and luggage in this car right now, and uh, weight does affect it a bit. Uh, this car is not fast. I would measure the zero to 60 at a time, but I left my sundial at home. What you do get is a lot of features that aren't available in other cars like this. You've got this 4-inch screen up here, sync, Bluetooth connectivity with their new AppLink software so you can control your mobile phone through the car. Very neat feature. You've got available leather in a whole bunch of different colors, heated seats, which believe it or not is rare at this price point. You've also got really good soft touch points. At this price point, plastic is the norm. You've got to expect a hard dash, hard plastics everywhere and Ford has really gone to really great lengths to put the soft touch points where they belong, like on the steering wheel, the top of the dash, where your arms go here, the door pulls, not everywhere, but the places where it really counts. Like the Mustang that we drove a couple weeks ago, uh, the Fiesta has Ford's new electric power assist steering system. What does it feel like? It feels like nothing. It's great. It doesn't feel like anything is intervening at all. And uh, when you're talking about European-inspired handling, what you really want is good steering feel. And what the Fiesta lacks in power, it does make up with it in good steering feel. Not too much body roll, tires stay glued, you get a little bit of noise, a little feedback if you get on it, but overall, the grip through the corners, very impressive. I really like what Ford has done with the new interior in terms of style. It's definitely more thought out than any of the other entry-level cars. There's a lot more going on in terms of the gauges, the center stack, just the way that things are shaped to give them a real design language, not just kind of a let's make it work sort of dash. I really like the fact that they thought about it, and it works. I'm sitting here, I'm a big guy, very comfortable driving position, plenty of leg room in the front, headroom up top, shoulder room. It's not a bad place to be. At this point, you're probably thinking, man, either Matt is getting paid by Ford to say all this stuff or he really likes this car. I'm not getting paid, that would be awesome, but I'm not. But there are a couple of things that I really don't like about this car. For one, the door lock button in the center, BMW's been doing it for years, I'm not a big fan of that. But on the door lock front, right now, the doors are locked. But look at this, I can open the door at any speed, even when the doors are locked. What's even worse is I can open the back doors at any speed, even when the doors are locked. That, to me, is a big safety issue that I think really should be looked into by somebody. Just a personal opinion. 
If you're looking at a small car, chances are you're concerned about safety. Most people think the bigger the car, the safer it is. Which is true, if you go play chicken with a semi-truck in this thing, you're probably gonna lose. On the other hand, for your average accident, the Fiesta is the safest car in its class with seven standard airbags, including a driver's side knee airbag for front end collisions. The Fiesta's weak link is definitely the back seat. There's not a whole lot of room back there, especially if you've got two big guys up front. On the other hand, if you're only gonna be taking one or two passengers or not a ton of stuff, this car's economy, styling, interior ergonomics, if you're not really a super car guy that demands the highest performance, this could be a totally acceptable and enjoyable daily driver at a really low price, and I definitely would recommend it. The EPA says the Fiesta can achieve 40 miles per gallon. Actually, one journalist was able to get 42, but more importantly, me, driving at Redline all day, still managed to achieve 27, even with a car loaded down with people and gear. In the parking lot of Candlestick Park, Ford set up an autocross for us to test out the Fiesta's handling and performance capabilities against the Toyota Yaris and the Honda Fit. The Fiesta managed to beat the Fit by an average of two seconds per lap, and the Yaris by an average of four seconds per lap, but most importantly, I learned that in an autocross, the automatic transmission is actually faster than the manual. Well, after driving the Fiesta on the autocross course and in some great canyon roads, I can tell you this. The engine is not a sports car engine, but great fit and finish, class leading economy, class leading equipment, and a really competitive price make the new Fiesta a very compelling product if you're in the market for a fun economy car. It murdered the Yaris and the Fit on the autocross and was able to hold a whole bunch of stuff when we went out filming with it. And I gotta tell you, I had a great time driving it. I really did, even though it's not the fastest car out there and you all think I like a thousand horsepower. Fortunately, we've got this. So I'm gonna go take this for a ride. Actually, that's a complete lie. Uh, I don't have a shoe company or a rally license or uh, any of that cool stuff that Ken Block has. All I have is this little, little internet TV show and you people. I'm Matt Farah, and I'll be back next week. Walmart had a sale on gear. It's a Fobgina. I don't know what else to call it. The Evo bends the earth to its will. This car is impossible to drive slowly.